And we're getting a little bit carried away because I think the majority of us have got Manchester City going through, but clearly it's going to be a very, very tough uh, tough tie for them. Yeah, no, it's, it's, you know, it's one of those games where, I mean, Real Madrid, you've seen what happened with Chelsea and, and you know, historically they're, they're a big side. So you can never really go into a, a game against against those kind of teams thinking you're going you're gonna to have it easy, you know. So uh, obviously City is a different beast nowadays and um, and I would I would like to say that they're the favourites, but Madrid is always going to be Madrid and, and we've seen what they're capable of doing with the player they have. So... Uh, like you said, I can see, guys, you are really excited and I think everybody will be enjoying that game because it's going to be a, a really, really big game of the of the year. Gail, talk to us about Karim Benzema because you played against him. How much of a problem is he? Yeah, he's well. Everybody knows what he's doing uh, and I think everybody now, starting just now, to realise that he's been, you know, more than 12 years at Madrid and just this in itself is, is, is a massive achievement, you know. A striker in Madrid... Uh, with that longevity means that, you know, people can see your qualities. Um, and obviously, you know, he's been playing, you know, next to Ronaldo for, for so many years. And, and he had the, the, he was clear in his mind that, you know, the, the main guy was Ronaldo and he had to play for him. Uh, and he'd done that for, for many years. And, and not many players, you know, could, could do this, you know, in Europe, being in Madrid. So uh, for him to have that understanding of the situation is, is clearly... Uh, something that not many uh, uh, can 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 have, and and now I think he's shining, you know, for for everybody for everybody to see. But he's I played with him with Dana, with France, you know, and everything that he makes is very simple and very easy. It looks easy, but how efficient is 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 he's been the best for 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 many years now, you know. Yeah, well, a lot of people kind of play it down about Manchester City winning the Champions League. Um, how important do you feel is is that they win it? It is important. And even if, um, you know, let's say they don't win, they don't win it this year and they win the league, people will say it's a great season, which will be a great season. Uh, but we all know what is missing, uh, you know, for, for this club for the last 10 uh, years. Uh, every single year they've been progressing. They've been playing better and better. Obviously, since uh, Guardiola came in, uh, they became like a super uh, mega team of, 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 of Europe. And he came, he came here, obviously, to win silverware, but he came here to win the Champions League. So, um, yes, it will be a great season even if they don't win the Champions League and they win the Premier League. But really, we all know that he's there for this. He's there for the, for the Champions League and they will all want that. All the players are working so hard. I'm still in touch with them. And, uh, and obviously, the Champions League is probably the best competition after the World Cup. So, uh, yeah, they have to win it and they will, they will really go for it tonight. Gil, can I ask you, my friend, how important, I mean, you look at Manchester City and you look at the the wonderful football players they have in forward areas, you know, De Bruyne, Grealish, Jesus, Silva, all these guys, <clears throat> but how important is Ruben Diaz at the back? Because I personally, I think he, he's vital and it's an amazing thing to see, actually, as good as City are, I think they're a better team when he's in the centre of defence. Well, I think, you know, losing company was always a big, a big thing, uh, you don't get centre back for cheap nowadays, and 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 world class centre back are really rare. So uh, it was a thing for me since Vinny, Vincent left. It was one of the priority that they need to adjust. I think they addressed that with uh, with with him. Um, and you can you can see that already. You know, since he's been in the in the side, he's got that thing like Vinny. You know, he's, he's you know when he's there. I wouldn't say the team feel more secure, but he bring that calmness. You know, he bring that calmness that the nervy feeling is not there when he's around. And mm-hmm. and and also, obviously, having uh, having players like De Bruyne and, and Sterling. You know, because you didn't mention Sterling, um, they can cause trouble and make the difference at any time. So yes, he's important, but equally as important as all the players they have around the team. You know. Gail, just tell us about um, the psychology of it because you made the semi-finals with City in 2016. Um, obviously, they made the final last year, but there are criticisms at, at Manchester City that they can't go all the way. Just tell us a little bit about the psychology and the pressure that the players will feel. I, I don't think there is uh, extra pressure on those players because, you know, you every, every year it seems that you're getting closer kind of thing, you know. Um, I would say that the, the semi-final I played against Madrid the club was in a different situation. The club was growing. The club is still growing, but now it's a different situation because they have a different manager. They have different players. They have players that mature a lot. Um, and like you said, you know, lost it 
last year shouldn't be an extra pressure to win it this year. I really feel that nowadays teams drawing Man City will feel, oh, wow, you know, we have to play and we have to go at City. When before it was more of a, yeah, you know, we're playing City, they are great, they're, they've got good players, but we can do that. I think nowadays people are really thinking that's going to be a tough game. And, and this for me is a transition going on well because every year they're progressing. So extra pressure, I would just say that, you know, playing Champions League game is, is, is pressure in itself. So there will not be extra pressure and I'm pretty sure they will enjoy that game because I don't want to say they're the favourites, but clearly City is growing and, 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 and City is one of the big in, in Europe uh, uh, today. Yeah, I've got to ask you about another one of your former sides, Arsenal. Um, really good result against Manchester United at the weekend. Um, do you make them now the favourites for the top four spot? Yeah, well, you've seen, you know, teams win, teams lose, you know, uh, one game after another, you know, they drop points. So um, I would say it's a great because it's great three points because obviously, you know, the, the, the fixture itself against United is always a big game. United is not the team that it used to be uh, back in the days, if we are honest, but... Um, I think that's the kind of game that you need to win if you want to pretend uh, finish in the top four. I really like the way they play. Uh, I was, from the beginning, sure that Arteta was going to do a good job given time. Uh, I think he's been giving the time and, and sufficient you know, uh, financial backup to, to, to do so. So I think it's an important one. City for tonight is an important one to, to go through and to make another step in the Champions League. But that game for, for, for Arsenal was was an important one for the step of, of going uh, into the top four. So are they the favourites? Yes, uh, because of their form, because of the way they play, because of the exciting talent they have. Uh, but obviously, we know, you know, you can win against United, uh, put yourself in a great situation and then lose the next game. And then, you know, it's all over again. So uh, uh, I, I would like to see them in top four. I think it's a club that deserves that. Uh, it's been uh, going for a few years that, you know, they struggled, you know, to maintain some, some form since uh, Wenger left, you know, actually. But I think this year they're doing, they're doing really good and I, I would like them to, uh, to, to catch the top four spot because they deserve to be in Champions League, you know. Mm. Um, Gail, Theo Walcott is listening and he says, my man Gail, he looked after me and I feel like I must owe him petrol money when I couldn't drive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Theo. Hey, you know, it's, we, we go a long way back with Theo and, um, and he's one of those guys that will always be around me, you know, when I talk about football, because we uh, obviously we, we spend so much time at Arsenal. But, you know, when you're young and you're coming like this, I've been through that situation when I signed for Arsenal, when I had to go and, 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 and take a, a ride from, from another player. So, yeah, my man for you. Um, did you see um, Dennis Bergkamp and uh, Thierry Henry at the Emirates at the weekend? They were talking to Emil Smith-Rowe and, and Saka as well. I, I loved that. I loved that combination of the old and the new as well. What do you think of the, the young players that are coming through at Arsenal at the moment? I mean, it's, it's, it's beautiful. I was a little bit scared a few, few months ago because it was a time where, you know, those two players actually were actually carrying the team, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and this is great. It's great to see because they're the product from the academy and obviously, you know, the talent, you don't, we don't talk about talent because it's there for everybody to see. But sometimes it can be a little bit difficult and tricky because you're asking them to do so much at such a young age where... It shouldn't be like this. You know, they should have players around them taking responsibility, making sure the team is winning points, uh, and they should just be there to improve, express themselves, and show how good they are. But they were doing this on top of, you know, performing like the big, big shot of the team. So um, what I want to say is that, you know, you want to see this. You know, Arsenal is trying to rebuild, and, and, and the best way to rebuild a team and a club is using academy academy player and they're lucky because they've got so much talent uh, and I'm really happy for well first of all for the players but also for the club because if they manage well those two situations those two players you know they could, they could go a, a long way okay. awesome yeah Gail we'll let you go thank you so much Cheers, Gail. great to hear from you nice to talk to you, you guys really good to speak to you uh, Gail Kalishi there thank you to him Premier League winner um, with Arsenal Manchester City as well a reminder as well that we have live commentary of Man City's Champions League semi-final first leg against Real Madrid tonight you can join Adrian Durham from the Etihad at 6pm us on TalkSport 2 and then you can head over to 7pm on TalkSport you can swipe between the stations that's a full commentary of the match as well
Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.